Welcome to the Complete Discipleship Evangelism 48 Lesson Course by Andrew Womack and Don Crow. Level 1, Lesson 11 What Happens When a Christian Sins by Don Crow. Today we want to look at the subject of what happens when a Christian sins. The Bible tells us in 1 John 1 verses 8 to 9, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As Christians, we will eventually stumble and we will eventually sin. What makes us different from what we were before conversion is that now we have a new nature. It grieves us to sin. We do not want to sin. We want to live a righteous life. But what happens when we do sin? Do we need to get saved again? Is that what the Bible is teaching? In that case, we have no security, and in some sense, we are worse off than the world. At least the world is not tormented by a sin conscience. As believers, sin is not to be our focus of attention. Hebrews 10 verse 2 states that through the sacrifice of Jesus, the believer should have no more conscience of sins. In other words, sin should not be the focus of our lives. God should be our focus. Romans 4 verse 2 says, For if Abraham was justified, declared righteous, by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. If salvation was based on our merit, the things we do, then we could brag. We could say, Hey Lord, I really appreciate what you did on the cross, but remember the things I've done. So throughout eternity, we're going to pat Jesus on the back and pat ourselves on the back for the things we've done. No, God has designed salvation in such a way that there will be no boasting or glory on man's part. The only glory and boasting will be in the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 3 verse 27 The gift of eternal life is indeed a gift, and it cannot be earned. Romans 6 verse 23 Romans 4 verse 2 says that if Abraham was justified by his own actions, he would have some reason to boast. But that is not what happened. How does the scripture say a man is saved? By his own performance? By his own works? By the things he does? How was Abraham counted righteous or declared righteous? Was it through the things he did or didn't do? Or was it that he simply believed, trusted, and relied on God through faith? The Bible says in Romans 4 verse 3, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. What holds me in position and keeps me from perishing, even though there are times when I fail and sin? It is that Jesus bore all of my sin on the cross and through faith in him, not by my own works, I am justified, made righteous before God. Romans 4 verse 6 says, Just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works, David of the Old Testament is saying there will be a day through a new covenant when God will impute righteousness, right standing, without man working for it. Then he said in verse 7, 
Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. This is the clincher. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Romans 4 verse 8 It doesn't say he might not. Sometimes he will and sometimes he won't. It says, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. In the Greek, that is what is called an emphatic negative. It means he will never, not ever put sin to our account. This is the good news of the new covenant. Hebrews 10 verse 16 says, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds I will write them. And part of that agreement is that God says this in verse 17. Then he adds, Their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. What holds you in position in righteousness and right standing? even when you sin and don't have time to confess it. It is your faith in Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus, and he saves people from their sins. Matthew 1, verse 21. Let us now take this opportunity to pause and reflect on the lesson by considering some questions. Suggested scripture readings will first be read, followed by the question to be answered. A pause is then recommended to allow time to meditate on the scripture as an individual or to discuss as a group and formulate an answer. Finally, the suggested answer will be given. We read Romans 4 verse 5. But to him who does not work but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Question. God justifies, makes righteous, people who are what? Answer. Ungodly. We read Romans 4 verses 2 to 3. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Question. God put something to Abraham's account when he believed, which he did not have before. What was this? Answer, righteousness or right standing with God. We read Romans 4 verses 22 to 24. And therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Question. If we believe as Abraham did, what will God put to our account? Answer. Righteousness or right standing with God. We read Romans 4 verse 6. Just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. Question. God puts righteousness or right standing to a person's account a. According to their works b. Apart from their works or c. According to how nice they are. Answer. B. Apart from their works. We read Hebrews 10 verse 14. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. 
question. How long are believers perfected before God? Answer, forever. We read Romans 5 verse 17. For if by the one man's offence death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Question. Righteousness is received how? A. By earning it. B. As a gift. Or C. By working for it. Answer. B. As a gift. Question. What does the word gift imply? Answer. Something freely given, without cost to the person receiving it. Question. To trust Jesus to be your personal saviour, you must trust him to take you all the way to where? A. Church B. Heaven or C. Russia Answer B. Heaven Thank you for joining me and taking part in our lesson. This lesson is one of many steps on a learning pathway taking you deeper into discipleship and relationship with the Lord. And now, stay tuned for our next lesson.